Now you may have seen YouTube advertising from a company called Maus, M-O-U-S, talking about indestructible phone cases. And I contacted them and they've sent through something that's rather interesting. This is not an advert or a sponsor section, but this particular item caught my eye, and here's why. It bridges the world of the various phone cases out there. The endless battle between back cover and side protection and folio cases with a flip over front cover. It, the battle rages on. Both have pros and cons, of course, plus unending fashion choices in terms of materials and looks. But what if you could have the best of both worlds? A supremely durable TPU case like this with tasteful walnut backing so you can throw it around and generally live your life outdoors and at the office or down the pub. And then when you need to be out and about in the big wide world with access to cash, non-phone compatible loyalty cards, contactless payment cards and so on, you grab your flip wallet, as Mouse is calling it, magnets auto align your phone in the case to the back and you're off. You use your phone in this folio form, storing it typically in a biggish pocket or man bag or similar. And then when it's home and time to chill with just your phone again, minimal force is needed to detach the case phone and put the wallet in the hallway or wherever you keep your going out things and your wallet. The implementation here is sound. In fact, it's very good with the wallet side featuring four card slots of which one is hidden and positioned for contactless payment through the front flap, plus cash and anything else you need to keep safe, plus a mystery bit of elastic. Hmm. The magnets have another use too. Mouse sell a wall mount with stronger magnets, circular here. And the idea is you stick it up with the supplied 3M tape on your wall, if your wife will let you, Slap your case phone on it in portrait or landscape mode and bingo. Well, bingo if you want your phone mounted on the wall, perhaps for hands-free watching of YouTube or podcast listening. Me, I tend to move around the house a little too much. Of course, there are some caveats. The system is only available for the latest iPhones. I'm using the iPhone 11 Pro here. In theory, Mouse could make it for other models, but they're only a small company and have limited capacity, I suspect. The system's also quite expensive, around £50 for both case and flip wallet. And it's also quite thick once the phone is cased and then magnet attached to the back plane with your own selection of cards and cash laid on top and then behind them the leather front flap. In practice, fully set up, you're looking at around an inch, around 25 millimetres, which is a fair old chunk of stuff in your pocket. But credit where credit's due, Mouse has put a lot of thought into what they call their limitless 3.0 system with the auto-aligning magnets and dual form factor. It's something I'm going to be trying out more over the UK winter when bulky coats with large pockets are de rigueur. The Nokia 7.2 represents the new Nokia's first bite at having the Sony 48 megapixel camera sensor and as a result this new phone is somewhat camera centric, at least if you believe the marketing. Though I've tested the imaging and like every other Sony 48 megapixel censored phone, it's not as impressive as you'd think. I'm convinced at this stage the only companies that get the software behind their phone cameras perfect are Apple and Google. Nokia, like Motorola and others, make something of a pig's ear out of what should be a high quality zoom enabled camera system. See the samples here with comments. Some of the images aren't pretty. Zoom is a non-starter. Image purity is ruined by overzealous and unnecessary noise reduction and sharpening. And only the wide angle lens saves the day by delivering fun wide shots that you might not get on some other phones, which shall remain nameless. Having mentioned Google just now, note that Gcam ports are available for the 7.2 and they work well with less noise and purer details. It's a bit of a hack though. Videos decent, mind you, with EIS and the fabled Nokia Ozo stereo sound. But enough of the camera system, the Nokia 7.2 is a pretty standard monoblock form factor with 6.3 inch notched LCD screen. The frame is polycarbonate and not metal, but it befits the price point, just over £200 in the UK. Very impressive. The back is glass, but clear and showing the black paint job underneath. A welcome capacitive finger scanner means not having the hassle of a problematic in-screen sensor. Hooray! And yes, you can swipe down on this to bring down notifications. The camera island is substantial, mainly to allow the thickness of that main 48 megapixel camera and its optics, but it's all neat enough and pretty. Up the top is a mystery hole. 
Apparently, if I put headphones in, miracle, I can hear my music with no latency, good quality and with no batteries to run out. Oh, that the 3.5 mil jack would carry on for a bit longer. Insert my usual rant. Battery is 3,500 milliamp hours, large enough with this chipset to get through a busy day with ease. Fast charging is absent though. You're limited to two amps, i.e. 10 watts, and of course there's no Qi wireless charging at this price point. The speaker's mono, i.e. there's only one, which is very odd given the large speaker grill up at the top. I can only think the internals got changed late in production. Quality is quite low though, it's full volume. It's all very middling. And all a bit harsh and tinny and I, I can't listen to any more of that, I'm sorry. Maybe excusable at the price point though. The other cost cutting, a Snapdragon 660 doesn't exactly race through applications, plus there's no waterproofing. 64 gig of storage plus micro SD is plenty, as is 4 gig of RAM though. The display is perfectly fine. To have all this for £200 odd is pretty, pretty good. For one of your kids, for your partner, or perhaps for a backup Android phone, this, this can be recommended. Yes, you can get Xiaomi phones more cheaply with comparable specs, but these don't always have the critical NFC that the 7.2 has for tap to pay. And this Nokia runs Android 1, meaning that it will be kept up to date by Google for three years. And that counts for a lot in my books. See also the Motorola One Vision, by the way, with the same underperforming sensor, almost identical specs, and the same OS for roughly £50 more. Plenty of choices anyway at this end of the market. This is the Nokia 7.2.